Hello, hi, very good morning. So today's live session will have image-based discussion pertaining to hand instruments and operator dentistry, right? So I'll, I'll show you a few instruments which are available and which we use commonly in our undergraduation pertaining to hand instruments in operator dentistry, right? And also simultaneously we'll have a discussion, brief discussion regarding those instruments in specific their design and also the uses of those instruments, right? Hi Prithvi, Regina, Neetu and Abhishek, good morning. So before that, first we'll start with the instrument formulae. Uh, it's better if you can note down these values because these values are not given in old edition of Esther Benz. Uh, mostly you'll find them in a newer edition, right? Latest editions of uh, Sturt Benz, right? The Southeast Asia or we have a few other uh, editions available in market. So various instrument formulae. I mean, I'm not exactly sure like how many questions or whether there can be a question from these instrument formulae, but it's always better if we can memorize the values of this uh, instrument formula, right? So first we'll discuss excavators, right? Excavators, um, in specific, bivivalent ordinary hatchet, hoe, angle former, and also the instrument formula of various spoon excavators and chisels, right? And then briefly we'll discuss the parts of an instrument and then we'll proceed with each instrument, right? So I've got a set of hand instruments. I'll uh, demonstrate them. I'll show you those instruments. You identify and let me know what kind of instrument it is. So first coming to excavators. So the instrument we have basically three unit formula and four unit formula as you all know. So three unit formula. So we need not uh, uh, really need this elaborate explanation because I'm sure you're all familiar with these uh, formula and all right. So instrument formula, the for in case of a three digit uh, formula of a particular instrument, take for example a chisel, a stripe chisel. So a stripe chisel, the instrument formula is twelve seven and zero. So what does twelve indicate? So the first digit, the first value indicates the width of a blade in one tenth of millimeter right we're all familiar with that and the second value indicates the length of the blade in millimeters right 12 is the width of the blade in one tenth of millimeter it means 1.2 mm and the second formula the second value 7 indicates the length of the blade in millimeters so 7 mm would be the length of the blade and 0 is nothing but the angle of the blade since the angle of the blade is perpendicular to long axis of the instrument we consider that as zero right so 12 7 0 so in case of a three unit formula that's how we proceed but in case of four unit formula we have certain instruments like gmt's and also we have angle formers which have a four unit formula so in this case the first unit is the same it represents the width of a blade in one tenth of millimeter but the second unit indicates a primary cutting edge angle so in the blade we have a primary cutting edge and secondary cutting edge so while showing you the instruments we'll have a brief description pertaining to them so second digit indicates or second value indicates primary cutting edge angle and the third value indicates as usual the length of the blade in millimeters and the fourth value indicates the blade angle right so this is in brief the description pertaining to the instrument formulae right we have three unit formulae and four unit or four digit formulae now coming to excavators so the instrument formulae of excavators in specific we have bivivalent ordinary hatchet hoe and angle former remember hoe is also a type of excavator right so by bevel ordinary hatchet the instrument formula is 3 to 28 right so we represent it in this fashion 3 dash 2 dash 28 right so by bevel ordinary hatchet the instrument formula is 3 to 28 and ho the instrument formula for ho h o e is 4 and off 1 and off and 22 it's 4 and off 1 and off and 22 and angle former the instrument formula we have four unit formula for angle forward 
So it's 12, 85, 5 and 8. So 12, 85, 5 and 8. Okay. And spoon excavators, we have binangle spoon excavator, triple angle and a ordinary spoon. So binangle spoon excavator, the instrument formula is 13, 7, 14. Whereas triple angle spoon excavator, the instrument formula is 13, 7 and 14. And spoon excavator in specific, it is 15, 7, 14. So binangle, triple angle, the instrument formula is the same. 13 7 14 whereas spoon excavated it is 15 7 14 so the width of the blade slightly varies and coming to chisels we have this enamel hatchet where the instrument formula of enamel hatchet is 10 7 and 14 and GMT we have two sets of uh, instruments right so one set that is mesial the other distal so mesial instrument the second primary cutting edge angle varies. So in case of measel instrument, the second digit is around 75 to 85. In case of distal, the second digit value is around 90 to 100. So GMT, the instrument formula is 12 and half, 100, 7 and 14. That, so that's in case of a distal instrument. In case of measel instrument, it will be 12 and half, 75, 7 and 14, right? And straight chisel 1270 in case of straight chisel and middle strat chisel it's 11 on 11 and off 15 and 3 and bin angle it is 10 7 and 8 right so these are instrument formulae so all these values are given in your latest edition of stirred bins uh, it's always advisable to memorize these values right uh, so uh, they can ask you the primary cutting edge angle of a specific instrument or they can give you uh, like they can directly ask you the instrument formula of a particular instrument giving various values in options right okay. now let's proceed with the parts of an instrument as you all know and so if you take one hand instrument for example So if you take one hand instrument, as in this case, so we have this entire body. So this forms the handle, this forms the shank and this forms the blade or working portion, right? So the area between the working portion and the handle is called a shank. That is the connecting part. Okay. Now I'll just project each instrument in an order we have an order here because while going ahead with preclinical conservative work or operative work we follow the same order in our patient as well right so just identify and let me know what instrument it is and also we'll have brief discussion pertaining to that particular instrument hi hi Preeti Ramesh a very good morning I think it's advisable rather than going in an order I'll just uh, show you the instrument at random let's see how well you can identify it just give me two minutes okay Abhishek, to which princess are you talking about? I mean, to which princess are you addressing your question?
Hi, Vernus. Good morning. So, by the way, you asked one question pertaining to cumulative incidents and episodic incidents, right? So, uh, I've seen that question uh, before recording one video on epilomoscal terminology. So, I've included that uh, in our e classes. Just have a look at that video, right? So, we discussed various terms in epidemiology. And also we had one discussion on case control and cohort study, the differences, right? Okay, so I'll just project you the image. I think if you have this black background, it will be much more clear for you to identify. So I'll show you each instrument at random and see how well you can identify it. So, can you identify this instrument? I mean, is it clear or? Hmm. I mean, is it clear with the a black background? Or do you think it's better if I project it in this manner? It's not getting focused, right? Okay. I think this is better comparatively. Yeah. You can also see the cutting edge. It's not focusing if I place it near. Yeah. So as you said, it is a stride chisel and if you observe the stride chisel, you'll have a bevel on one direction, right? I think this is okay. Okay, fine. Yeah, and also as we discussed, the instrument formula. I mean, it usually varies. We have different sizes, but the standard formula is 12, 7 and 0. Since the primary cutting edge is perpendicular to the long axis of the instrument, it is considered as zero okay so what is the function of a stripe chisel so. yeah it is a stripe chisel true so where do you use stripe chisel for I mean, while preparing cavity, uh, say except for plaster models, of course we uh, use stride chisel uh, to modify our plaster models or prepare cavities in plaster models. Yeah, let's talk about the operative part, the clinical aspect. To remove unsupported enamel, okay, it helps in cutting enamel. Yes, Rakesh. Hi, Rakesh. Good morning. Yeah, it helps in cutting enamel. It also helps in yeah smoothening the walls or planing the walls right okay great now to identify this instrument hi mega good morning is it clear Okay, be specific. Uh, what probe is it? Is it a probe, first of all? No, maybe it's not. Yeah, I think if I get that closer, it's not focusing. Let me just try with the black background again. Yeah, I feel you can appreciate that now better. Okay. So, what are the readings which are, yeah, that's a Williams probe as we discussed in our uh, one of the image based uh, discussion pertaining to Perio. So, 
what readings are missing in case of a Williams probe and why. I also said that it's a Michigan O probe with Williams markings as given in Carranza. So which readings, I mean how many markings do we have on this Williams probe and which readings are absent. Is it 5 and 7 or 6 and 8 or 4 and 6? So what markings are absent in case of a Williams probe? Four and six. So four and six markings are absent. So why do we have only four and six markings as uh, I mean as missing? Why not five and seven or some other marking? Why do you have one, two, three, and again five and again? 7, 8, 9. Okay, what is the maximum extent or what is the maximum limit of markings which are present on Williams probe? Maximum is not 7. If you observe, if you remember. Standardization, okay Abhishek, why such kind of standardization? Why did this stand dies in that uh, manner? Eleven point five? No, that's a different one. Mm, C P A T N. I'm not exact. I'm not exactly sure. But Williams, it will not be eleven point five. Yeah, the maximum markings would be ten, and maximum markings would be ten and. 4 and 6 are missing. Why only 4 and 6? Yes, it's easy to identify the fifth one or easy to differentiate different markings. If you have a continuous series of markings, it will be of course be very confusing to identify the depth or the calibration. And most importantly, what is the normal circular depth? In, in a normal healthy individual, what is the circular depth? So that should give you the answer and that should give you a clue. Yeah, bingo. So here we have the answer, right? Yes, during measuring we need not count the reading, that's true. And also the normal cell clear depth is 3 mm, right? So 4th and 6th are missing. Is it to differentiate the third marking and also to analyze the depth of pocket? By the way, periodontal probe, as you all know, it's used for analyzing the pocket, periodontal pocket, right? So we have this uh, probing stroke as we discussed in our one of the videos in e-classes and walking of probe and all, right? So that's all uh, understood. Now, let's have another instrument. That's true, yes, Rakesh, it's 3 mm, right? Yeah identify this instrument okay let me just post it here itself it's better or in this fashion so identify this instrument in fact we use very limited number of instruments in our operative dentistry compared to what's being explained in a text so it should be rather easy for us to identify these instruments. The rest of the instruments will try to cover image based um, in, one, in, in a separate video, right? So we have a lot many like well stat chisel, uh, bin angle spoon excavator. So all those things will have a separate discussion, right? So all those which are available for us in our uh, undergraduation will have a discussion pertinent to those instruments today. So what is this instrument? Bernice, you say ho. Abhishek says ho. Rakesh, it's not ho. Then what is this instrument?
so this is as you can see we have single ended and double ended instrument right so obviously it's a, a single ended instrument and let me just give you a hint it's a kind of excavator so this is a kind of excavator and this is used for smoothening or planing the walls of cavity and also this is used for creating line angles in class 3 and class 5 cavities of direct filling gold restoration so that should give you a clue so as i said it's used for smoothening or planing the surface of walls to remove unsupported enamel and also it helps in accentuating the line angles in case in case of class 3 and class 5 cavities of direct filling restoration chisel is something which appears like this nidhi so this will be the chisel <laughs> i have to put up all the instruments now Okay, anyways, we'll get back to the other uh, things uh, later. Yeah. By the way, this is uh, hope. Okay. So enamel hatchet is a double-ended instrument. By the way, so hoe single-ended instrument, and it's a kind of excavator. It comes under uh, excavators, right? So it's also used for planing, removing unsupported enamel, and also creates or accentuates line angles. chisel there is a bend angle chisel and what is this straight chisel so this is a straight chisel what we are demonstrating is a straight chisel we do not have a bend angle chisel here okay right so this is hoe which we have discussed now so by looking at the cutting edge and the orientation of see uh, for example yeah mono angled or there is no angulation right in case of chisel no you talk you're talking in general okay fine yeah okay identify this instrument now so it's a double ended instrument so identify this particular instrument Yeah, yes, Nidhi. Uh, I'm talking about the instrument which I demonstrated, right? So we have straight chisel. We do not have by an angle, mono angled, or a curved kind of chisel here, right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for the information, Nidhi. Yeah. So this is a spoon excavator. So based on the shape, we have uh, ordinary spoon excavator. The one which I am showing you now, we have uh, cleoid and discoid type of spoon excavator. Yeah, true. So, the purpose is to excavate soft caries, infected dentin, and to leave affected dentin right there. So, to, uh, to further know the differences between infected and affected dentin, you can refer one of the videos in our uh, YouTube channel, right? So, I've elaborated the differences between infected and affected. So, this is a spoon excavator, right? So, double-ended instrument used for removing spoon uh, soft caries and also for carving amalgam and for carving wax patterns as given in literature it can also be used for carving amalgam and for carving wax patterns direct wax patterns okay
So that's a spoon excavator. Fine. So this, I, I, I guess you can answer this uh, quick. So identify this instrument. Yeah, spoon excavator is also used in ART, right? A traumatic restorative treatment. Good. And what is the type of GIC we use in case of ART technique mega? Since you said art, which type of GIC do we use? Yeah, it's given in literature saying that it can be used for carving. But not in students, I reckon. In students, it's not given. In one book of preclinical manuals, it's mentioned. Yeah, type of GAC, type 9? You mean to say posterior has type 9 would be uh, not fluoride releasing? Yeah, yes, I think it's type 8. I don't exactly remember. Type 8, I think it's used in highly visc high viscous, right? So, viscous kind of consistency. Mm, I reckon it's type 8. Type 8. Anyways, we'll just cross check it once again. So, this is an explorer. Explorer uh, or curved probe, right? So as one of you rightly said, Abhishek rightly said, so one side we call it as shepherd's, shepherd, S-H-E, okay, shepherd's hook, the other side, yeah, we have, we call this as interproximal explorer, the other side, right, so this is for the occlusal aspect, so explorer is mainly used for evaluating the consistency of the occlusal aspect and this part, the pigtail part or interproximal explorer is used for evaluating the consistency of the surface of the proximal surfaces, right? This is shepherd's hook. So it's a double-ended instrument as you all know. Yeah, it's type 8 which is used in a traumatic restorative treatment, type 8. Yeah, 9 is geriatric and pediatric. Type 8 is for art. Yeah, type 9 is for uh, pediatric, uh, geriatric patients. Okay, fine. Now... We'll have the most important one. This we personally ask in uh, Vive also, right? Yeah. So what are these instruments? Hmm. Okay, let me just project this on with a black background, I guess it should be easy for you to identify. I think the details are not so clear, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is GMT. Yeah, obviously we have a measles GMT and distal GMT. You can see that the blade is slightly curved isn't it the blade is slightly curved okay so how do you identify a measles gmt and distal gmt of course uh, you might not have such question in your uh, exam I mean exam point of view but okay anyways since we're discussing that so gmt the main function of gmt is 
yeah we have a right instrument and left instrument and we have a mesial gmt and distal gmt so in this which is right and which is left if i ask you such question how do you answer in these two instruments which is right and which is left and which is mesial and which is distal so how do you identify mesial distal or right and left so do you have right and left in a single instrument or mesial and distal in a single instrument yeah gingival marginal trimmer is used for removing unsupported enamel over the gingival margins and it's also used for uh, in the process placing a gingival bevel of 15 to 20 degrees and also helps in rounding off the axopalpal line angle right so these are the functions of gmt so in a given instrument in a given instrument you will have a right instrument and a left instrument right and one in be mesial the other would be distal right you will not have mesial and distal in the same one but we will have one mesial and the other distal yeah okay so how do you identify that yeah you just hold your instrument in this manner with the cutting edge facing away from the operator just hold it in the L and the long axis instrument should be parallel to you cutting edge away from the operator if the blade turns towards left then that's a left sided instrument if the blade curves or turns towards right then that's a right sided instrument so that's how we identify the sides whether it's a left one or a right one right and then coming to whether it's mesial or distal if you observe the blade if you observe the cutting portion you have this i mean if you observe the edge of the blade you will have a sharp projection a pointed one facing away from the long axis of the instrument away from the long axis of the instrument that is distal if the pointed margin is towards downwards in this case towards the long axis of the instrument that is mesial so that's one way of easily recognizing the mesial one and distal one so left and right you just hold it towards which direction the blade turns right the cutting portion of the blade should face away from the operator but not towards then if it turns towards right right side it left left side the instrument and the tip of the blade the sharper part the sharper margin if it is away from the long axis of instrument as in this case then we call it as distal always if it is towards mesial right so towards the midline mesial away from the midline distal right so that's how we can easily remember anyways uh, not uh, sure how far it's relevant for you but uh, practical point of view instrument identification this uh, gives you a clue and then you have so by the way the instrument formulae for gmt include 12 and half 100 7 and 14 in case of distal in case of mesial it is 12 and half 80 7 and 14 we, we need to memorize these values right so mesial gmt the primary cutting edge angle is less around 75 to 85 whereas distal gmt the primary cutting edge angle is 90 to 100 okay So can you identify this instrument? I'm, I'm not sure whether you can really appreciate the details. So it's a double-ended instrument, that's for sure. Double-ended instrument. We are unable to focus it because these instruments are so fine and since it's a front cam maybe we can, with a, a dslr with a dslr it, it will be possible yeah 
yeah it's not a round condenser okay it appears like a cylindrical condenser but no. Uh, yeah this is enamel hatchet so enamel hatchet yeah the tip is not clear as i can understand even i can see the same the tip is not so clear yeah, this is an enamel hatchet i was under the impression that i could accurately focus these instruments but no yeah enamel hatchet right so enamel hatchet it's mainly used for removing unsupported enamels and to plane the surfaces right to plane the surfaces of cavity so identify this instrument now yeah to remove unsupported enamel lip of enamel all that right so identify this instrument so this is one end of the instrument and this is the other end of the instrument i think you can identify this instrument clearly right so what is the name of this instrument and what is its function one end we have a flatter end a flatter end on one end the other end we have a cylindrical end if you observe it's a cylinder right so this is yeah why do you call it as plastic yeah one end is for carrying the cement the other end is for condensing the cement right yeah it's focusing me because i am huge comparatively since it is small you are unable to focus it i think now it's focused but uh, it's not i mean we can only see the actual small size of the instrument rather than larger one yeah if i bring it closer it, it isn't focusing yeah this is a cement carrier right so cement carrier why do you call it as plastic filling instrument by the way it's made of metal right all these are stainless steel instruments so why do you call it a plastic filling instrument mm -hmm. a spatula is different right again yeah because it is used for carrying instruments in Uh, yeah, to carry cement in plastic steels right so plasticity is ability to mold and all right so since it carries a cement in plastic steels it's called as plastic filling instrument mm. now identify this instrument yes nidhi that's true I mean that's what I was telling. If we have a DSLR, uh, if we have a live through DSLR, then we can focus in specific. We'll have a varied focal length. Uh, focusing is possible, but here, since it's a front static cam, it's not really possible to focus in specific the instrument. I think it's clear now comparatively. Yeah. So this is a double ended instrument. a cylindrical condenser yeah so as you all know it's used for condensing amalgam what do you call this angulation you have this angulation here right have you heard of balancing balancing of an instrument so we have these angulations contraangulations so that to bring the working portion as close as possible to the long axis of the instrument so that there will be uh, so that there we can prevent or there there won't be any slipping of instrument while we are applying pressure right 
I hope you heard of balancing. Yes, Rakesh, it's condenser. Yeah. Okay. So that's a cylindrical condenser. So identify this instrument. So it's a parallelogram condenser. Okay. Good. So I think it's I'm pretty clear now, right? Yeah. Parallelogram condenser. Okay, fine. Yeah. Comparatively easy. And yeah, this is also a condenser. Now identify this instrument. So you have a ball end, a small, a smaller one and a larger one. Yeah, this is a round ball burnisher. We also have a pear shaped ball burnisher. Yeah, now we have carvers, right? So I'll project all the carvers at a time. And let's see. Yeah. Serrations are used on a condenser you're talking about serrations on condenser there are no serrations on ball burnisher okay if at all there are any serrations because few instruments have serrations so that when you add up the next increment there will be better bonding We don't have serrations on a ball burnisher. Yeah. So identify these uh, three set of instruments. I think it's difficult. So we'll project one at a time. So focus on this part. I'll show you the other part later. So these are all carvers, right? Hold on, hold on. Let me just show you. Hmm. Yeah. Now, so is it Hollenbeck, Wards, or Diamond Carver? You have the diamond shape, so easy to identify, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. So diamond shape Carver. Now. So I'll show you these two instruments at a time because you need to differentiate which is Hollenbeck and which is Watts. Mm. Okay, the top one and the bottom one, which is Hollenbeck and which is Watts. So this is one end. and this is the other end so based on this end you can easily identify right yeah when you have this kind of a shape or orientation so this is what's yes the top one is what's carver and the bottom one is hollenbeck so what's carver double end instrument one end and this is the other end right and then you have Hollenbeck Hollenbeck yeah it's true okay fine I'm sorry for the sounds okay yeah so this, it should be easy for you to identify.
we have a piston here we have a hollow part in order to carry amalgam so this is an amalgam carrier right so that's obviously understood yeah cool so it helps in carrying amalgam and also helps in simultaneously condensing amalgam in the cavity we use a condenser but in order to retain the amalgam in a cavity we can place it and condense it simultaneously okay this is clear a seven spatula okay mm. so this is it i mean oh, okay uh, i'm sure you all know this right is it a locking type of tweezer or a normal one so you also have no this is this is a normal one locking type of tweezer you will have a provision for lock where if you press it it gets locked in this position so this is a normal one we do not have the provision of locking yeah we also have teeth yeah okay so this is obvious right so what is this yeah straight probe straight probe I didn't get your Abhishek. Which tip are you talking about? Yeah. And finally, tell me the other name for mouth mirror. Other name for mouth mirror. Can you see another image in the mirror? I think you can play for some time. So my image is getting reflected here. Hmm. It's also called as odontoscope. It's also called as cone and socket instrument odontoscope. Okay. so reflection retraction and illumination right you mean to say tweezer there is a tip i didn't get it okay you mean to say this tip this one are you talking about this tip maybe to orient while closing to prevent the tweezer from closing in other directions it guides in closing so that you can have better control here in this area maybe that's the reason why we have this vertical slot yeah that's what i feel because without that there is a chance that the instrument might see you can just it, it can just slip away like this right so to prevent that ha from happening maybe we have that uh, like ball and socket kind of joint not exactly ball and socket but a kind of orientation where it gets so it redirects the probe in a proper direction during closure right so these are some of the hand instruments which we commonly use in operative dentistry so i just wanted to present them uh, and in next video in some other video we'll definitely discuss various other type of instruments which are not available on hand right so we have various diagrams present in various standard textbooks we'll project those images and uh, we'll have a discussion pertaining to other hand instruments also right so okay they have asked you this exam so did the examiner give you the answer later okay
because when i'm discussing these hand instruments the only thing that comes to my mind is uh, the viva because viva they ask you to pick some instrument they they ask you to explain that instrument that's the only thing i got in my mind <laughs> told to find the answer that's what we say usually okay then did you find the answer then in that case you should be telling me what exactly that vertical slot is now it it helps in guiding if you observe some instruments i mean with practical experience i'm telling you if you don't have that vertical slot the teeth will close in uh, can can close in a different position uh, something like this they can close in in this kind of position right so to prevent this happen from happening we have this kind of slot so that it guides in proper closure of instrument so that there will be better grasp on cotton rolls or whatever uh, material you are picking with these tweezers right they never give up <laughs> yes i'm laughing because i had uh, many such similar experiences during my age uj they'll only ask us to find out and we'll never have an answer for it right yeah and so i mean i hope this session was useful for you so in fact i was planning to have these soft copies of images but i thought like since we're using them so why can't we project the original instruments uh, to make it more interesting so i i know it's quite challenging to focus the instrument so it's not really clear to look into the details so maybe uh, definitely i'll also make one recorded video using my dslr so that we can have better focus on the uh, working portion because the working portion of any hand instrument is very very important and that helps us in identifying the instrument and that is the area which is really essential to use an instrument and the function of instrument is mainly attributed to that working portion isn't it yeah so that's why i just wanted to have that original touch so in fact i i, I kept my instrument somewhere so i'm not sure where they are so i asked one of my second year students and the kit is really good i said i'm not uh, i'm not trying to promote this company so let me just close that with hand so we have i mean previously we used to have just one pouch but now you have this kind of uh, like it appears like a bag with zip and this design is really quite impressive and you have all this so i'm not promoting any company here but i i feel like this design is uh, so good that it's easy to carry the instruments right and uh, also we have a provision to close this here something like this okay fine uh, so you have any queries always as i say you can drop any queries at proud to be dentist at gmail.com and we can expect a reply uh, within 24 hours if possible as soon as as soon as possible as early as possible you'll have the answers for your uh, mails right now glad to hear that neetu prithvi awareness right so this completes our fifth session of week and tomorrow we're going to have one general session right tomorrow evening saturday evening we'll have one general session uh, now already shared the topic right so evening nine o'clock tomorrow evening nine o'clock we'll see you again yes sir we have become so used to it we can we can identify even by touching with eyes closed yeah as actually that feel is very important 
uh, the image based questions we have this problem right so we see these questions but it's difficult to retain usually uh, seeing is good but seeing and feeling is very good but it's not possible to feel all the image based uh, the questions or images which we come across right mm. yeah anyways glad to hear that nidhi you welcome welcome right okay then in that case we'll conclude it's already 57 minutes yeah So see you tomorrow morning. We are going to have more record. By the way, we have updated our e-classes. I'm, I'm not uh, giving a bulk mail these days. I mean, for the past two weeks, uh, because of time constraints, I'm unable to uh, send you a bulk mail regarding the update of videos. We are uh, updating our e-classes website with a lot many new videos. So I mean, time to time, every day, make a habit of just checking uh, that particular week. Uh, for, for example, this week we have public health dentistry, the final subject. Uh, in our course so we have more videos uh, being uploaded to public health dentistry right so so far we have uploaded around uh, 9 to 10 uh, in total including the YouTube live sessions so we're going to have more recorded videos in uh, e-classes right so from next week we're going to have a chunk of uh, recorded videos uh, being up uploaded in a phased manner right and you, you can check out can check out our e-classes and if possible whenever uh, it's possible we'll just send you a bulk mail or we'll intimate you via whatsapp update group right okay have a nice day and i'm sure you're giving weekly test tomorrow right so don't skip weekly test make sure that you give a complete the respective weekly test and stay uh, up to the schedule right okay all the best bye